Hi folks and welcome to Truck King. Today we have an exciting off-road pickup truck comparison because we've got these two. That is the Toyota Tundra TRD Pro and that's the GMC Sierra AT4X AEV and we're going to find the mud, rocks and water and see which one is better. take a walk around on this GMC Sierra starting with the powertrain. So that is a naturally aspirated 6.2 liter V8. It makes 420 horsepower, 460 pound feet of torque, and that is sent through a 10 speed automatic. So that's nothing special for this AEV edition. AEV is really all about bringing more protection to this truck. It starts up front with a real steel bumper and those big exposed tow hooks. These are so easy to get to always nice not only again for pulling you out of the mud but maybe for pulling someone else out of the mud now the next big upgrade here the tires that is a set of 33 inch goodyear wrangler territory mud terrain tires are wrapped around a set of unique 18 inch wheels but yes those mud terrains are going to be really important for us today and really important when you head off road next you do get a nice rock rail down here that's also part of the package as we get around to the rear end of the truck you do get a real steel bump there too with again big exposed tow hooks nice to be able to get in there as well and be able to pull something out now the other important numbers you need to know on this truck are towing and payload so when it comes time for towing 8700 pounds and the payload on this truck as it sits is just 1006 pounds now let's take a walk around here on the Tundra, starting with the power plant. So the only engine you can get with the TRD Pro is the iForce Max. That's a three and a half liter twin turbo V6 paired with the hybrid system. Total system output, 437 horsepower and a pretty ridiculous 583 pound feet of torque. And that is also sent through a 10 speed automatic, just like the GMC. So when you go TRD Pro, you do get a fully unique front fascia up here. You get this, uh, Toyota calls it tactical camouflage, this kind of cool looking material. It has a little bit of a texture to it too, which is nice. And then that classic Toyota across the grill, I think that the Tundra is pretty good looking. I know the styling has been sort of polarizing. People have mixed opinions. So why don't you just drop in the comments right now and let me know what you just think of the style here on the TRD Pro. Now rolling along, we get to the wheel and tire package. So here on the TRD Pro, you're getting a set of nearly 33 inch Falcon Wild Peak all-terrain tires wrapped around a set of 18 inch BBS forged wheels. It's a nice looking wheel. Although again, in this comparison today, these tires are not quite as aggressive as what we get over there on the GMC. So we'll see how they stack up. Now rolling back, another nice rock rail right here. Now other off-road gear here I haven't mentioned yet, locking differentials. Here on our Tundra, we get a rear locker and that's it. It uses Toyota's A-Track system in the front end. That's essentially a brake-based or traction-based uh, locking system, but there's no locker in the front of the Tundra. There are lockers on the GMC though. That Sierra back there has two lockers, yes, front and rear. That's important to point out. When it comes to towing and payload, the Toyota is just straight up better than the GMC. Tow rating here, 11,175 pounds, and the payload rating on this truck as it sits is 1,155 pounds. So let's take a look underneath this TRD Pro right now. And you probably saw it, but up front, it is totally absent of tow hooks. This was a really big deal with this generation of Tundra. And yeah, on the TRD Pro, you want something up there to be able to pull the truck out if you're stuck, or maybe pull another truck out if it's stuck. 
and you don't get anything up there. The frame rails up in here, you could maybe attach to one of these holes, but again, that means you're crawling up under your truck, you're finding something to work in there or in there. That's a pain. So not having front tow hooks is definitely a miss by Toyota. Now moving down, we get to this huge TRD skid plate, and this thing is massive. It starts right up here after the bumper and comes all the way back here, protecting all of your front drive gear and your engine. And we'll try the magnet. That's a no-go, which means this is an aluminum skid plate, and it actually has some nice, almost like powder coating finish on it. It looks good, and it's gonna be seriously durable. Um, looking at the suspension, we do get a unique sway bar here in the TRD Pro, and then we get a set of Fox two and a half inch internal bypass shocks. So a nice little suspension upgrade there as well. Now, as we move back, there's no skid plates until the center here. The diff, or sorry, the transfer case right here gets its own cute little skid plate. And look, that one is steel. So we got a mixed use uh, skid plate case here. And then we get over here to the gas tank and this skid plate is plastic. So the fuel tank is a long plastic skid plate over here. So we have all three, steel, steel, aluminum, and plastic. Uh, as you get to the back, you can see again, your Fox internal bypass shocks. Back there, they have remote reservoirs. That's what's up on the front of the shock there. There's also a full size spare tire hanging at your rear end. Now let's look underneath this Sierra AT4X AEV and the whole AEV package, it's essentially a protection package. So we should see what that's all about right now. So the first thing we'll start off with is front tow hooks and you can see they're right up here in the bumper. Now you're probably gonna wanna buy some kind of shackle to put in there, even a big D ring, but those are nice. They're so exposed and they're right up there on the steel bumper. Now the next thing I wanna point out, I love how sealed up this is. There's no gap between bumper and your first skid plate. A lot of trucks you will have a big gap there and yeah I mean mud and stuff is gonna get up there on top of your skid plate you don't want that so first beefy skid plate magnet test that sticks that's a steel skid plate it comes back and overlaps directly with your next skid plate also a steel skid plate so your engine and all your front drive gear here are totally sealed up now the other thing I want to show you in the front of course the multi-matic suspension I love these front shocks because they're so short and fat they just look so funny um, but these are what's called spool valve shocks or spool valve dampers that's what they use inside to essentially offer different levels of damping for different situations so let's continue to roll back here here's the first skid plate we get to the Tundra really didn't have it's right up in the center here so this is going to cover up your transfer case and a lot of your other running gear too as we get back fuel tank skid plate also steel so there's no plastic here whatsoever i do appreciate that about this they're heavy duty skid plates uh, at the rear end you're also getting those multi-matic shocks and then maybe my favorite skid plate it's almost like a little helmet you don't see that very often but I like that too. Then at the very back end, you are getting a full size spare tire back there. And one other thing I wanna point out, we get a set of rock rails here on this truck, but you can see they're actually connected to the back end of the rocker panels. Unlike on the Tundra, you can see from this shot, those rock rails are connected directly to the frame. And I appreciate that about the Toyota. Hey everybody, it's Howard at Truck King. Listen, about two years ago, I was gifted a set of these giddy up straps and they've been in my truck ever since, helping my wife, my grandkids, even my mom get in and out. Well, just recently, we came into a supply of these and we now wanna sell them to you. So all you gotta do is reach out to us at hey at truckking.ca. Steve will throw that up here. Tell us where you are, what kind of truck you have, how many units you want. We'll get back to you with a price, including postage. Listen, we believe in this product and we believe you're gonna like it too. Alrighty folks, and now it's time to go off road. So first obstacle we like to tackle is our ditch crossing. And I'll be honest, in the last year, we've run it so many times, we've made it a lot easier because we've worn these ruts into it. But we're going to a new section of the ditch. It's the deepest section of the ditch. And we'll see how this truck does. It's pretty dry out here today because it's pretty hot. But again, we will see. So a key with the ditch crossing is coming at it at an angle so that each tire has its opportunity to deal with the, the ditch on its own. So I'm dropping in at a pretty severe angle here, but here we go. Dropping in. And right now I'm just four high 
off-road mode. That's all I've done. You know what though? I will lock up my rear end right now. Now the rear is locked. Feels okay so far. Yeah, well, now we'll see when you try to get out. Yeah. Alrighty. And now we're gonna try to climb the wall. Let's see what happens. Rear locked, off-road mode. Yes, okay, there it is. Come on, oh, little slip. <laughs> nice! A tiny bit of slip out of the rear end, but really not a lot. That was impressive, not only the angles, but just the grip out of these mud terrains. Hard to complain about that, man. Good job, GMC. Okay, and now time for the offset ruts here in the GMC. Now I'm going in with nothing locked up because lockers, the job of a locker is to make this simple. I like to see what the truck does with no lockers and then if we need a locker, well, we'll turn it on. So we're starting again, just in four high, in off-road mode, no lockers. This also lets us feel the flex out of the suspension. So right here, I'm about to lose traction on my rear passenger and on my front driver. Oh man. I'm not even sure it lost contact with the ground. The flex was so good right there. And again, this is nothing locked up. Oh, a little slip there, a little slip there. Next to nothing. I could feel the traction control stepping in to do its job. When there was a bit of tire spin, it was breaking the uh, the inside tire that was spinning and sending the power. So there you go. Off-road mode alone does a really nice job of kind of mimicking lockers here in the GMC. And I didn't even need my front and rear lockers. And now we'll hop in the Tundra and we'll see how it does both of those. Alrighty, time to try the same obstacles here in the Tundra. So first the ditch and then the offset ruts. Now to be fair, we'll do everything the same. So I'm going to lock up my rear end. Yeah, the Tundra wants me to be in four low to lock up my rear. See, and I don't like that. I disagree. I don't think I should have to be in four low to be able to lock up, but that's what it wants. So we're going to run in four high and we're not going to lock it up. I can steer into it a little bit too. I'm nice. Whoa. <laughs> well, you definitely felt the angles here on the Tundra are not quite as good, especially that departure angle felt like it hit pretty hard on the rear end, but it made it through pretty well. So the flex was there and the traction from the tires was there. So uh, the GMC was a hair better, but not, not by much. I should mention I am using the multi-terrain select system here on the Toyota. So I had it in mud mode for the ditch crossing and I'm going to leave it in mud mode for the offset uh, ruts here, but I'm not locking anything up. So we'll see what that, uh, what that does. Here we go. Now by all accounts, the Toyota should even be better here because it has a track, which is brake based traction control for your front end. But the GMC seemed to have that as well. So we'll see right about here. Let's mute that. Right here, we should lose traction. Oh, okay. It took a little bit more spinning there for the Tundra to figure things out. Okay, okay, and there it is. Okay, yeah, no, it definitely took the Tundra an extra beat to kind of figure out where to send the power right there. But still not bad, uh, but you can just tell the difference. The GMC seemed to have more grip and its computer system thought a little bit faster than the one here in the Toyota did. But they both made them through with no lockers, which is definitely saying something uh, very good about both trucks. So we can take a look at the cameras here in the Tundra. I'll put it in reverse. So there's your standard view. You get the rear and the overhead view, which is pretty nice. You also have a front camera right there. That's looking up at your front tires, so you can see them turning there. I like too that the predictive lines over here also move based on where you're turning your tires to show you where they'll be. That's pretty cool. Then that's looking back at your rear tires. 
these are helpful views, especially if you're uh, backing into a curb, let's say. You can really put your tires on them. There's your bed view, and you can even zoom that in. So if you have something tied down that you want to check on, you can do that as well. And then the auto button just means that at slow speeds, the camera will come on automatically. And then over here, this is specifically your off-road camera. So you can see it adds in these little gauges down there. You get an inclinometer, which is kind of neat. But then probably the coolest view we have for off-roading is right here. I gotta roll forward here. You're gonna see, it's actually gonna show us what's underneath the tundra there. So what it's doing is it's taking a, a quick image of what's just in front of the truck and then superimposing the truck over top of it. So as you drive over things, you can actually see what's underneath you. And once again, as you turn the tires, you can see our little tires there actually turn. So that's a really neat feature. It's not a live view underneath the truck like GM now offers with its midsizers, but it's still a neat feature for off-roading that a lot of brands just don't have. Now we can look at the cameras here in the GMC because it's covered in them as well. So there's your normal view, again, a rear view, and then that overhead view. There's your front camera. That's looking straight down at your nose or looking straight down at your tail. That's looking back at your rear tires, and that's looking forward at your front tires, so very similar to the Toyota so far. That's your hitching view, which is always important if you are hooking up a trailer. And there's a bed view here too, and again, this is kind of handy if you have some cargo back there you have tied down that you just want to go ahead and check on. And I will say, I do think the cameras here in the GMC look a hair better than the Toyota. It's just a little bit sharper. But then on the flip side, we don't have any of those super cool off-road cameras here that show me underneath the truck or anything like that. So in the off-road arena, so to speak, the Tundra is probably a little bit better with its camera system. Okay, folks, now we're diving into the deep water on the hydro line in the Tundra. <laughs> And so far, I'll say the Tundra's felt really good. The angles don't feel quite as good as the GMC. So I'm curious if I drag anything coming through here. And we're in. The water's actually quite low right now, even in comparison to about two weeks ago. It's just been hot and humid here. So the water's going down. Nothing locked up, but nothing needs to be. The power here is epic, no problem. As I get to the end of the pit, there's usually a couple rocks. Climbed that one, no problem. Climbed that one, no problem. Oh, and then coming up the hill. Oh, departure. Departure angle more than once now has let me down. My butt's dragging a little bit. <laughs> but so far, so good. And the thing I think I'll say about the Tundra that I'm noticing at slow speeds is the hybrid you do get this epic low-end torque out of the hybrid so you know it's always a fear with a twin turbo v6 or a small displacement turbo that it's going to be harder to modulate because you're going to suddenly have this you know rush of turbo power and that just doesn't seem to be the case here in the tundra i've not been in low range yet for any of this but i haven't needed to be because uh that hybrid power feels so good. Yes, I know, I know, I know. Automatic, I know, I'm pressing the brake pedal, Tundra. Okay, it's very mad at me right now. These automatic emergency brake systems, they are not a fan of when you try to turn around in the forest and you have to push into some small little twigs and trees. And I just said this in my last off-road video, I'm gonna say it again. The off-road mode, when I go into multi-terrain select, into mud mode, it should shut off all the parking sensors. It should shut off all of that stuff. When you're off-road, you don't want any of that stuff on, and yet Toyota just lets it all be there, so. Okay, successfully turned around now, and I'm coming down the hill into the water pit. So what we're gonna do is use Toyota's crawl control. So crawl control is off-road cruise control. My foot is now off the brake, off the gas. This is the slowest setting, so we'll leave it in the slowest setting. And besides the beeping, which is very annoying, once again, with crawl control, shouldn't you shut off the parking sensors? Anyways. 
but this is really slow and really smooth. Now Toyota took a lot of flack for the original crawl control system because it used the ABS constantly. So as you're going downhill, you'd hear it pulsing. This is not that at all. This is silent and uber smooth. So Toyota really worked to improve this crawl control system. Now I have one, two, three, four, five settings. This is the mid setting. And then we go to high one. And now through the water, I'm going up into high two. This is the fastest crawl control. Departure angle again. My hitch just came down hard on a rock. The rear end of this Tundra definitely hangs low. But this is crawl control, folks. It's doing this all by itself. The nice thing is it rolls the power on just super smooth. So there's no jerkiness whatsoever to speak of. Nothing like that. Yeah, gets the job done really nicely. And now climbing up and out of the pit. Any slippage? Nope. Nope, that's drama free. Well, besides some departure angle problems, the Tundra handled that like a champ. Let's see how the GMC does. Okay, folks, now into the water with the GMC. So same as the Tundra, we're in four high, nothing locked up, and here we're in off-road mode. GMC doesn't give you mud and snow and all the specific things. They just give you off-road mode and terrain mode. There we go. I was climbing the wall a little bit there, but coming into the pit, no drama at all to speak of right there. <laughs> oh, nicely done, GMC. I just love hearing the water sound on the doors. <laughs> it doesn't get old. Oh, nice climb right there. Climb up my rear end. Coming up out of the pit. Oh, front skid plate. That's interesting. So the front skid plate here on the GMC. Oh, come on, GMC. Oh, okay. This is interesting. I just got a little bit hung up here. And I will tell you, coming through there, I have to reiterate the fact that the low end immediate power that's available thanks to the hybrid, it feels better. It feels better than the 6.2. Now this V8, I'm certainly not saying it's not powerful. It's plenty powerful. It's got loads of power, but uh, I felt like I had to dig a lot further into the pedal to get full access to the power I wanted. Whereas the Tundra, I'm barely touching it. And it was, uh, it was just moving right along. So power delivery wise, I think I actually prefer the Tundra, especially for this slow speed stuff. Now, what I was saying about the front skid plate is that the front skid plate here is no doubt a little beefier and a little longer, but it also hangs lower straight up. So even though I know the numbers are better on paper, even just eyeballing it, you can see that that thing hangs lower than on the Tundra, and I did actually make contact with the rock in the GMC that I didn't in the Toyota. tough trail left hook so the big obstacle here is going through a mud pit and then immediately up a hill with all these loose rocks on it and those loose rocks especially here with our tundra i'll be curious to see how the angles play out okay folks so unlike the hydro line i want my rear end locked up so that means we got to put it into four low Four low, there's the locker. So now we're four low. We've got the locker on. Multi-terrain select is in mud mode. It is now as prepared as it can be for the mud. And let's see how it feels. <laughs> mud is thick today. Yeah, I know parking sensors, I know. Quiet. <laughs> Power feels amazing. Now we're combining the hybrid with some real low gearing. Oh, here comes the transition. 
Oh, there's some four-wheel spin for you. Nice, okay, transitioned okay. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> so that's your all-terrain tires right on this transition from mud to dry. What I need to try and do is get a bit more of a run at it. Okay, here we go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, stay in it, stay in it. And now we're going up these rocks, sketchy rocks. Stay driver side, stay driver side. Nice. All right, Tundra, well, that was a little surprising with the lack of grip and that I got to chalk up to tires more than anything. I did kind of lose my momentum going between the mud and the hill, but I've done that with lots of vehicles that haven't gotten fully stuck like that. So I just backed up, took a bit of a run at it and it was fine. But I do think that's also gonna be a difference between the all terrains here on the Tundra and the mud terrains over on the GMC. Um, angles felt fine there, clearances felt fine. It was just that four wheel slip that uh, didn't feel great. And now here we are in the GMC, we're coming up to the muddy section of the left hook. So we will do the same thing we did with the Tundra. I'm gonna put it into four low and I'm gonna lock just the rear end. Even though I could lock my front, let's keep this even and, uh, and we'll see how it feels. So we're moving into four low now. There it goes, locking the rear end and the truck is going into off-road mode. Off-road mode, four low with my rear end locked, here we go. And maybe now's a good time to mention a little bit of the luxuriousness of this GMC because I am currently getting a back massage while off-roading, which is a pretty nice feeling. I do like that. So, here we go into the thick stuff. <laughs> okay, nice, nice power delivery. And now here comes I won't take it too quick. Here comes my transfer point. And, and, yes! Identical rut that I went through in the Tundra. Oh, I'm slipping over towards the rocks. Careful, careful. Nice. So yes, those were identical ruts that I went through here in the GMC as the Tundra and the GMC did slip a little bit, but you can tell that's the difference. I said it before between all terrain and mud terrain. I, I really do chalk it all up to tires. The, uh, the mud terrains here in the GMC just feel better in that slick, snotty stuff. Whereas the Tundra, or yeah, the Tundra needed a little bit of, uh, of help and momentum to overcome. Now, tires is a tough thing. I'll take this time to mention this. I get it. If you buy either one of these trucks, the first thing you can do is change out the tires easily. So I, I, I will acknowledge that, but then we also have to acknowledge that we can only test the vehicles as they're delivered to us from the factory. That's why we don't change the tires, not to mention the logistical nightmare would be for us to do that. But this is how the trucks come from the dealership. This is the way the engineers want them to drive. So that's what we test. But there you have it folks, we're through and both trucks made it but the GMC made it with a little less drama. All right, folks, we're uh, off the trails now. We're out here on the road. I brought dad in to offer some thoughts as well. Um, the one thing we did do was we ran over to one of our local unmaintained roads so we could do a bit of high speed off-roading. Both of these trucks definitely have high speed in their repertoire. I mean, they were both developed in the desert. The brands definitely show that in all of their, uh, all of their advertising. So why not hit some potholes at high speed? And we definitely did that. So why don't you start there, Dad? What did you feel on the high-speed runs between the two trucks? Well, I mean, the first thing is no bottoming. Yeah. Um, really, with either one. Yeah. And there are, uh, when we say potholes, there are potholes over there that you could lose a Volkswagen <laughs> in. They're deep. So that that to me is is uh, you know that's the that's the yardstick. Sure. Because we were you know scooting right along hitting them hard and if I'm not hitting the bump stops well I guess then the entire suspension system is doing its job yeah 
I'll agree with you. I'll go one step further too, talking about truck to truck. I felt like the TRD Pro was a little bit better. I, I don't know if my brain was chalking that up to the leaf springs here in the GMC and just being a little jumpier in the back. But I, I don't know, I felt like the Tundra swallowed it up a little easier. I agree with that. This this one, uh, there's a bit more of a kickback, yeah. particularly in the back end, yeah. which, which I put down to the Leafs. That makes the most sense, right? This truck still has Leafs, whereas Tundra has gone to the coilover setup, so they've ditched them completely. So yeah, the high speed stuff, I lean TRD Pro a little bit too. So that's high speed. Let's talk about on-road now. I don't think you'll feel a huge difference, but uh, what do you think about just cruising, you know, nine to five, Monday to Friday? How, that, how are they? That's the thing. I mean, this is these trucks are so wonderful. They do not beat you up. Uh, you know, it always puts me in mind of, you know, Jeeps 20 years ago. You had to really love a Jeep because you hated driving it Monday to Friday. It was only fun on the weekend. Mm -hmm. But that's not the case anymore with pretty much any truck. So when you're on pavement, um, it behaves so well mm -hmm. and then of course when you get into the really really rough stuff it still sucks it up so yeah absolutely so both of them and I've driven both of them this week they're both nice quiet comfortable cruising trucks the power delivery is a little different out of the Tundra because it's the hybrid turbo you know unlike the kind of old-school predictable power out of the V8 and when I say that, what I mean is that you feel the battery kick you in the Tundra, and then you feel the turbo take over, but you feel like there's a lot going on, whereas this thing is kind of drama-free power, if I can put it that way. And the torque curve is just straight flat like that, which is nice. Um, so that depends on more, you know, what you prefer, I would say. And then... <sighs> I think the last thing we've already landed on now, Dad, is we have to talk about the price tags because this whole comparison is mostly going to boil down to what these trucks cost. And the reason I say that is because this GMC Sierra we're sitting in here in Canada is $108,000 as it sits. The Tundra back there in Canada as it sits, $87,000. So there's a $20,000 difference. Now we'll put the prices up here for the US trucks as well. I don't know if the Gulf is quite as big in the US, but that's a lot of money. And maybe the GMC felt a little bit better in a couple ways in terms of clearance and angles, but did it feel $20,000 better? No, just straight up, no it didn't. So this is the one where even though the GMC might have been better in some ways in the real world, the price tag absolutely lets it down. Everyone complains about expensive trucks. This is an expensive truck that I cannot endorse for that money. What do you think? You've, you've said it, and I'll sum it up to say that if I compare the two trucks, I pick the GMC. If I look at the prices, I'm going to buy the Toyota. Sure. The 20 grand is 20 grand. Yeah, yeah, and you just don't feel like you're getting that much more for the money. Well, no, because they, they both did the job. That was it. And if you're trying to pick a winner, it was it was inches, not miles. So, you know, that's where you look at it and go, okay, you know what? $20,000. I mean, and for a lot of people, I suppose, you know, if you're buying it bi-weekly, literally, so in other words, the twenty grand is not really coming out of your pocket in one fell swoop. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you know what? Twenty grand, even that's got to be an extra hundred bucks every two weeks. You think? On top of whatever your payment is for the Toyota. So. Yep. And and the one thing I'll just throw in here: the AEV edition is about seven thousand dollars Canadian. So even if we got rid of all the skid plates and the cool bumpers, this truck is still over ten thousand dollars more expensive. So in any way you boil it down, the Tundra comes out looking like a bargain. Have to agree. Well, folks, we have arrived at the end of this video. Now, on paper and out here in the real world, I do think the GMC here was a hair better off-road. But then once you take into account the price tags, I just can't find myself seeing the value in this truck. And that's why at the end of this day, we have to go with the Tundra TRD Pro as our winner. Because not only was it great on the trail, but it feels like a good value as well. So that's it for this one. Now please go in the comments and let me know what you think. Which one of these trucks would you buy, the Sierra or the Tundra? As always, while you're down there, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member of Truck King, and then come right back here to the channel to see what we're testing next. See ya.